Hi there, you're watching us on Mutual Fund Corner. I'm Mangla Malu and we will discuss an important recent report that came in which says retail ownership in India has jumped to around 12-year high of just shy of that 10% mark. They're telling you that 1 out of 10 retail investors are now participating in the market. Household flows into both markets uh, directly through mutual funds as well as uh, dire both directly as well as through mutual funds are the highest levels that we've seen in at least a decade and possibly ever. So we're taking up two related topics. One, can focused equity funds replace stocks slash PMS at record high with uh, Firoz Aziz of Anandrati Wealth? Firoz, uh, uh, you know, if you could first tell us that what is the return comparison for both PMS direct stock ownership versus, uh, uh, you know, say equity focused mutual funds and what do uh, uh, those parameters tell people about investing? I think, uh, good afternoon, Manglam. Uh, like you rightly said, there's so much influx of money uh, from the domestic side. Uh, so if you look at the comparison between uh, direct equity, PMS, and this special category, which was introduced a couple of years back in the mutual fund uh, space, which is the focused equity category, uh, from a, a comparison standpoint, if you take PMSs who have greater than 500 crores uh, and are multi-cap, let's assume uh, we take those uh, schemes, that's about 500 crore plus schemes. Uh, actually, the focused equity category has outperformed these schemes over the last three years on a rolling uh, return basis, which is, I think, a phenomenal thing. So about 1% uh, extra return is what uh, they've been able to generate, point one. Point two, Mangalam, uh, I think uh, at highs of the market, it's very, very critical uh, that we reduce the risk marginally. So direct equity uh, actually have very, very high risks when you create a portfolio of 810 stocks. Uh, so three different PMSs, uh, which are very concentrated, anywhere between 20 to 25 stocks, uh, the Motila, Loswal, the Access, and the SBI, are as concentrated as it could get, unlike uh, the rest of the mutual fund space. Right. Uh, so from a return standpoint, uh, you know, the mutual funds have done better. PMSs have outperformed just for the last six odd months. But the big question, risk, where does that uh, uh, comparison fall? Mangalam, risk, uh, if measured uh, numerically uh, mm -hmm. in the form of standard deviation, uh, the risks of the three schemes on the mutual fund side, which I spoke of, uh, is 17 to 19 numerically. That's called the standard deviation. PMSs could have anywhere between 25 to 26 percent standard deviation, which means PMSs could be 30 percent more riskier uh, than the schemes I just spoke of. Direct equity, uh, different stocks have different risk measures. You can have a stock which has a 50 standard deviation, and there is also a HDFC bank, which is the least standard deviation stock with 17, 18. Uh, so direct equity is very diverse in terms of risk numerically measured, not in English. High, medium, and low is what most people uh, refer to when it comes to risk, which is not the right way to do it. Uh, so PMSs could be 30, 40% higher uh, than these focus categories, and direct equity could be twice, thrice more uh, riskier as a specific stock. So if we speak in finance terms, the Sharpie ratio of holding it via mutual funds is much better, basically return per uh, unit of risk that you're taking. Absolutely, uh, Manglam. It's all, there are two sides of the coin. One is the return, the other side is the risk. Uh, we tend to just focus on the return, especially in euphoric times like these. Uh, it's also very important to look at efficiency, which is sharp ratio. A risk upon uh, return upon risk and that's where the focused category has done phenomenally well it is a retail guys pms uh, if you have done very well buying stocks yourself uh, consider yourself lucky as a good start point uh, make sure that uh, you don't get too complacent uh, move that to managed portfolios uh, and that's uh, i think a very prudent thing to do at least for a portion of the monies which you have made uh, in the direct investing needs to move into a more managed portfolio and what better than a focused fund category uh, to do justice uh, from a risk return perspective. Right, we take that point, uh, Firoz, but you know, uh, these are not mutually exclusive events. What if one was to, uh, you know, take a small piece of uh, PMSs, then combine that with a fair amount of direct equity exposure in times like these? Because, you know, these times do make people feel that okay, whatever they do get into will give them a few returns, some returns. 
and then also uh, on on a defensive side of the portfolio perhaps deploy some money into these con uh, concentrated mutual funds to equity funds that is so have you done any analysis on how combinations of these would work yes uh, mangalam of course we've done a lot of analytics in terms of trying to see what combination suits uh, but uh, uh, you're absolutely right some portion of direct equity some portion of pms and mu mutual fund in the focus category could be done unfortunately pms is a lumpier chunk 50 lakhs being the minimum amount uh, makes it reasonably unaffordable to large portion of the audience uh, direct equity and mutual funds are both affordable uh, but we have to remember when we are mix mixing different constituents to make a portfolio you have to remember that all of them are complement not complementing each other they're competing with each other so there are plan a plan a1 plan a2 and plan a3 so all of them will go up together and go down together that's when it's very important to mix in a portfolio something which will work complementary to the rest of the constituents like for example at anandra tv infuse structure products which behave in the opposite direction or at least uh, don't behave so correlated so all those three are relevant but remember that these are all plan a's of the portfolio you need to have a plan b when you're trying to uh, speak at a portfolio level so you know so far from all the things that you've said uh, the one thing that stands out is one pms they've underperformed focus equity funds by around 1.2% per annum uh, they've outperformed focus equity funds by for just about 6 odd months and pms has a higher risk than focus equity funds of around 2.5% per annum so on most of these parameters that you're presenting here equity mf is uh, looking like a much better option why is it then that people still go with pmss and what makes pmss is so attractive see what happens is the hni fraternity hmm. which is the uh, exact uh, investor in the pms uh, likes that certain degree of exclusivity uh, and of course costs uh, can be customized in pmss unfortunately tax inefficiency creeps in Uh, so to my mind focused uh, equity category has not been noticed adequately uh because it is one of the newest categories formulated by sebi now and that's what we are trying to highlight here in the show that uh, a mutual fund which has 21 stocks uh is as good as a pms so you would have the better tax efficiency a greater performance more regulated audited performances daily navs which pmss don't possess and that's why i would say that this requires a mention uh, even for the hni fraternity not just for the retail fraternity Uh, because the rest of the mutual funds have 50 60 stocks in them on an average this is uh three times more the concentration and that gives you the high conviction bets a fund manager wants to take uh and uh, that's uh, something which will gain momentum as people become more and more aware of this category right you know it's it's so interesting that uh, and it's coincidental as well this morning i got a very nice note uh, by david perel which says that it's talking about the stupid test as an investor you want to find things that are so stupid that other investors are embarrassed to invest in and uh, uh, investing is the only place where uh, you know simplicity is something which is avoided because if you leave money in simple places which compounds over a period of time you're not considered smart smart people think that they'd like to do a lot more complicated work and uh, like you said you know maybe pms is something that uh, gives people that sense of okay i am getting exclusive service it's a concentrated high conviction bet yes there is a fair amount of risk but at those levels of wealth maybe they can take that uh, risk and generating that sort of wealth uh, via pms is gives them a bigger high than just generating that wealth uh, would that be a cor uh, correct assessment absolutely you hit the nail on the head uh, mangalam uh, when you meet uh, hnis especially they like this whole bit of and uh, not keeping it as simple because uh, simple uh, makes them feel that it can't be this easy investing world can't be so easy so you're right and i think we have to all uh, remember that simplicity uh, and uncomplicated products uncomplicated strategies have a large merit and compounding does that for a person over long periods of time uh, so you're right uh, exclusivity complexity attract people especially the chennai fraternity also this uh, obsession with alpha you know i'll be very honest uh, 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 my thoughts on this uh, limited as they may be that over the long period if you could uh, generate beta without losing fair amount of your capital you are going to be better off than people who are generating alpha for a smaller period of time eventually risking their capital 
Absolutely, uh, Mangalam. Uh, so now uh, creating a portfolio which has lower beta than Nifty uh, is what efficiency is all about. And uh, you're absolutely right. Over long periods of time, if you earned yourself a certain alpha and uh, with an efficient uh, fashion, you would be getting multiplier on the compounding, which is going to be significant enough to not ignore. All right, take that point, uh, Firoz. Thanks a lot for joining us. What we'll do is take a short break. And...